This is a Sharper Image Bonfire S'mores Maker, but it's much, much more than that. Let's check this out. Counter cooking. No kitchen, no problem. This is what it says. It says it's a flameless electric roaster, four marshmallow forks included, and then it has a picture of it, and it's kind of unique looking. I've never seen a s'mores maker that looks like this. They kind of make it look like a campfire, like on the bottom these would be the logs, and then this would be like the fire, but it also looks like a marshmallow. So then I turned it over and this is what the other side of the box looked like. And let me show you what I thought was the most interesting part. So this is the heating element for the s'mores maker. And when I saw that, it made me think of a hot plate, of an electric hot plate. So this is an electric hot plate that I purchased at a local thrift shop several months ago. I still have not taken it out of the box. It was brand new. I bought it for $5.99. Actually, the date is on it. It says May 11th, and that's when I bought it. So it's been more than a few months ago. It's been probably like six months ago. And the reason why I purchased it is because it only runs on 750 watts. And most electric hot plates run on at least 1,000 watts, if not 1,200 watts. So the fact that this was only 750 watts was a really good selling point for me because if I was cooking off-grid on one of my solar power banks, for example, 750 watts is a lot better than 1,200 watts. And because this s'mores maker had an electric coil in it, and it looked like a smaller electric coil than the typical hot plates, I figured it would use less electricity than a traditional hot plate, and that could be really interesting. So this is what the s'mores maker looks like when it is fully assembled. It is about seven inches tall and about nine inches wide. So it's definitely not one of the smallest s'mores makers. I would say it's probably one of the largest s'mores makers that I've seen. And just to give you a comparison size wise, it's a lot bigger than a Dash Mini Griddle. Like it's really big. And this is a size comparison with the Dash 8 inch griddle. So this top plastic piece that looks like the flames, this comes right off. And then you have this metal piece and then this metal piece comes right off. It's really kind of like a decorative protective piece. And then here's the heating element and look, it's exactly like I described. It's like a mini hot plate. So the coils are around four inches wide and it only uses 280 watts. So if you're cooking off-grid, if you're cooking using solar energy, this is potentially a game changer. This is a hot plate that's using less than 300 watts. So surrounding the heating element, we have this nice stainless steel area. The rest of this unit is plastic. I don't know if you could see, but around the top, there is some browning. I think it's because um, when this is placed on it, if you're using it for extended periods of time, I think that's what's causing the browning. And then here on the bottom is where the s'more sticks are stored, and it's kind of it's kind of tricky. They don't screw out. Ideally, you would be able to just like unscrew them and get them out. You have to kind of like pull them out. Okay, this one came out. So see, it's like a little, it's a little fork, and then that extends. Uh, so you, if you want to make your s'mores that way, you can make your s'mores that way. I mean, it's cute. For a s'mores maker, it's cute, but um, for using it as a hot plate, it's really not a necessity. You have to wiggle it back in and then just push. So I've been testing this out as far as using it for a hot plate. I've done cooking directly on this coil like you would on a hot plate. On a hot plate, you're gonna put a pot directly on the coil. I've done that with this, with a small pot. It works fine. I've also done it with this metal piece on top. This works fine as long as you don't cover like all of the airflow. So for example, I tried it with a small frying pan that covered the entire surface. And I think it was starting to overheat a little bit. I could be wrong, but 
that's just how I felt. I felt like maybe that's what was causing the discoloration. And I did see some, some weird, I don't know if it was smoke or steam, just like coming out of where um, these forks come out of. Now, disclaimer, very big disclaimer, in the documents that come with this appliance, it clearly says do not use this appliance for anything other than its intended purpose. Its intended purpose is to use it as a s'mores maker. So I'm not telling anyone to use it for any other purpose than as a s'mores maker. I'm just describing to you how it appears to me, what my observations are, and how I've used it. Once again, it clearly says don't use this for anything other than a s'mores maker. However, I'm going to tell you how I used it and how I potentially can use it if I am in an emergency situation or if I'm cooking off-grid or via solar power. So this is how a Stanley camping pot fits on top of this mini hot plate. You can see it fits well. It's on a slight angle, which I have not found to be an issue. And it, it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy and stable. And then with this metal piece on top, there's still some airflow around it. Um, this is one of the wider Stanley pots. There's also this narrow pot, which works as well. It works there also. And if you want to quickly brew some espressos, that works too. So because of the size of this heating coil and because of the wattage that this only uses 280 watts, there are some limitations as to cooking with it. So it will not boil water. It will not heat water higher than about 200 degrees. I tested that out and I did use a thermometer to check on the temperature of the water. So it will make steam. So for example, the espresso pot that I showed you um, will actually brew espresso because it brews it via pushing steam up through the pot and it does make steam. So uh, it works for that purpose. It will not bring liquid up to a rolling boil because it only heats it to about 200 degrees, but it will bring it up to a nice simmer. It will heat it nicely if you wanna just like heat up some soup. It definitely cooks things on it because 200 degrees is fine for cooking most things. Um, I've made eggs on this. I've heated up soup on this. I've heated up other leftovers on it. I think I even cooked some chicken on it and I mean, it works like a mini hot plate. So I wanted to make this video just to let you know about this appliance. I think it's really interesting, which is why I purchased it. The majority of the other s'mores makers on the market that I've seen have a smaller, heating coil than this one. The heating coil might be, I don't know, maybe like half the size of this one. And the fact that this had a larger heating coil is what made it really interesting to me because it does potentially make it infinitely more usable. And because this runs on 280 watts, it can even be used on a portable power station that is only 300 watts. So for a small 300 watt portable power station to be able to run a hot plate I think that's really good. So I just plugged it in. There is a power button on the front. I press the power button and they say to wait, I don't know, 10 minutes for it to fully heat up or to preheat. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna get a marshmallow and let's test it out as far as roasting marshmallows. I'm not gonna make a s'mores just because I'm not really a fan of s'mores. I always think that they're just way too sweet. I've never ever enjoyed them, but I do enjoy toasted marshmallows. So once this heats up, let's test it out. So it's been heating up for a few minutes. I'm just gonna put a marshmallow over it. The other nice thing about this decorative edge is um, you can rest your marshmallow stick on it. I don't know if it's heated up enough yet. It's not gonna be anywhere near as fast as throwing a marshmallow into a fire. Yeah, it's giving off heat for sure. Starting to toast a little bit, you see? It's getting brown a little bit.
there we go now it's starting to really brown nicely I feel it starting to slide around on this fork I don't know if you could see it oh wow oh my gosh this is totally soft do you see this? Oh my god. That's so good. That was like the most perfectly toasted marshmallow I've ever had. The only thing that would make it more perfect would be if the outside was a little bit darker. The inside was just perfectly uniformly melted. But I do like a little bit more charring on the outside. But I am absolutely shocked at how well that worked and how good that was. Like I said, the only thing missing was more color on the outside for a little more of the burnt flavor. I don't know if you could see it, but the outside is turning from a bright white marshmallow to a more ivory color. Like it's slightly darkening because I keep turning it. There should be like a marshmallow rotisserie. There it goes. Can you see how it's starting to get even darker now? It's just getting very uniformly the same color all around really. I don't know if the camera's picking it up because sometimes with whites it gets blown out. I think it looks darker in person than it does on the camera. So if I keep rotating it, will it stay on the fork and not fall off? I don't want it to fall off onto the appliance. So right now I could tell that this marshmallow is really, really soft inside. It's, it's definitely more difficult to keep it. Okay, it's not even going to stay on this fork. So here it is. I don't know if you could see it, but like it's just... It's totally melty. And the outside is lightly toasted. So if you're a fan of like really, really dark marshmallows, then you might be a little bit disappointed. But if you like your marshmallows really melty, this is like really good. I always like the crunchy outside, which is what I just had. Very good. And so that is how this Sharper Image Bonfire S'mores Maker toasts marshmallows. It does a really, really good job toasting marshmallows. The outside of the marshmallows doesn't get very dark, but they do toast nicely and get really, really melty. So I just took that outer ring piece off, and this is my mini cast iron skillet. So I'm going to heat this up for a few minutes. I just put some butter in the pan. You can see that it's melting nicely. And now I'm going to crack an egg in. Okay. And let's see how it does with frying an egg. So because the heating coil is up there and there is so much appliance underneath it, like down here, these are completely cool. Even if I touch the bottom of this base, it's only very slightly warm. And that's this white part is only slightly warm. I can keep my hands on it, no problem. This part, the metal part, is very, very hot. You do not want to touch the metal part. But for example, uh, this plastic is completely cool. And there's the egg. It's almost completely cooked. I'm going to say that's done. I'm going to shut off the power, unplug it. I'm going to grab a spatula. Let's see if we can get this out. Or is it going to be stuck? All right. So there's the fried egg, let's cut into it. Nice and runny, I could have cooked it longer if I wanted it cooked uh, more well done than this. Let's give it a taste. It's actually a little bit more runny than I like it. I should have cooked it another minute or two. 
but it's good. So the nice thing about using a mini hot plate versus like a dash mini appliance is that you don't have to use a non-stick surface. You can use cast iron like this little cast iron pan. You can use stainless steel, which is one of my preferred materials to cook in. You can even use the Corningware Visions glass cook set or even some of the Corningware ceramic pieces that you would normally use on an electric stove. Basically, you can use any cooking pan or pot that you would use on an electric stove on an electric hot plate. And that's what's really nice about it because you don't have to have all kinds of different appliances. You just need a mini hot plate and then your mini pans or pots and it's like totally versatile and you're not limited to using a non-stick surface for those of us who are not fans of cooking on a non-stick surface. So I just wanted to let you know about this appliance. Once again, the instructions that come with it say, only use this item for its intended purpose. The use of accessory attachments not recommended by the appliance manufacturer may cause injuries. Also, do not use appliance for other than intended use. So they say it two different ways. Do not use appliance for other than intended use and only use this item for its intended purpose. So I want to make sure that I stress that. Don't use this item for anything other than its intended purpose. But I also wanted to show you uh, the possibilities and potential for this appliance. And I should mention that I purchased this at HomeGoods. It was $29.99. Um, the company that owns Home Goods also owns TJ Maxx and Marshalls. So a lot of times you'll see the same products in all three of those stores. And I'll also put a link to this product on Amazon in the description below this video in case you want to check it out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.